Hi, everybody. This is God Sad. Many years ago, I think it was in 2009, I had written an article on my Psychology Today column, and I'll uh, provide you with the link in the description section, wherein I talked about some of the psychological insights that uh, one can uh, reap, if you'd like, from uh, watching Gordon Ramsay. There used to be an old show called Kitchen Nightmares that I had started watching, uh, I guess this is now maybe 10 years ago, where he goes into a failing restaurant and then he turns it around. And uh, recently I discovered uh, this other show where instead of uh, you know a, a, an expert going in and saving a flailing restaurant, it's a expert going in and saving a flailing uh, bar. Uh, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, or maybe are guessing what I'm talking about, it's Bar Rescue with John Taffer. Now, John certainly has a very unique and direct style of communication. But in going back to my article from now almost 10 years ago and reading it regarding uh, Kitchen Nightmares, it's pretty much the exact same article that would be written if it were written for Bar Rescue. So what I thought I would do is I would just read you uh, some of the key insights that I had identified uh, in the earlier article, and then I'll you know, add a few snippets as relating to Bar Rescue. So number one, uh, here are some of the you know, sort of key items that I take away in terms of psychological dynamics. Number one, one of the big errors that people make, uh, at least in this case in the restaurant, context, but I think it also applies to the bar uh, context, uh, build it and they will come. This is one of the classic marketing mistakes that countless small business owners make. Specifically, they are driven by their vision of what their etab establishment should be, even if there is no market demand for this particular concept. For example, in an episode that I watched this past weekend, a business consultant who otherwise had no restaurant experience decided to live out his dream of owning a tapas restaurant that also offered live music. He had illusions of grandeur as far as owning an establishment where the next Beatles might be discovered. Unfortunately, the customers detested both the loud live music as well as the reheated tapas ingredients. Well, this is as relating to Kitchen Nightmares, but I've watched a few Bar Rescue episodes where it's the exact same phenomenon. So, for example, on one of the shows, he goes in to save a restaurant that has a pirate theme. The restaurant is... I mean, the, the bar is failing miserably. Nobody's coming in there. It's cavernous. It's dungeonous. It's, it's grotesque. It, nobody wants to go to this sort of pirate-themed bar. And yet the owner can't let herself, you know, she can't uh, stop her fantasy, right? She wants to own a sexy uh, pirate bar. And no matter how much information that's coming her way, suggesting that it's that's failing. She's already deeply indebted. Uh, she still wants to hang on to that uh, dream. Another case that I just watched right now, maybe the worst example of a bar owner that I've ever seen on the show. I've, I've only watched maybe, I would say, seven or eight episodes. Uh, yeah, at least enough of them to get a sense of the dynamics of the show. This was an older lady who ha had a bar in the swankiest part of Chicago where she would basically get up and play live music. And of course, the music that she was playing wasn't particularly good, but she somehow saw herself as this you know, great artist, even though the people didn't want to hear her, nobody wanted to uh, be exposed to her music and her, her silliness and you know her free spirit. Uh, and when he came in, he meaning John, to try to change her, uh, you know, the position of the bar, uh, she was unbelievably hostile, belligerent, uh, and obstinate. Again, what, what mattered to her is her ego. This is her baby. This is her vision of how she wishes to, uh, you know, uh, instantiate her fantasy. And it doesn't matter that she's nearly, I think, $600,000 in debt. And her son, who has a little daughter, uh, might not be able to provide for his family. She has to live out the dream of her being a singer even though uh, a deaf person wouldn't want to hear her uh, you know, singing. 
Let's move on to number two, inability to accept feedback. An important element of being an entrepreneur is having sufficient self-confidence to partake in risky endeavors. However, self-confidence can quickly sink into dogmatic and intractable positions that become impervious to this confirming feedback. Hence, in many instances on the show, individuals doggedly reject Mr. Ramsey's expert and valuable advice by dismissing it as nonsense. Returning to the restaurateur above, despite the clear negative feedback that customers were voicing, he prodded along, self-assured in his vision. He was undoubtedly thinking, quote, the customers are wrong as my vision is so right. That's exactly what happens on the shows on Bar Rescue. The person typically who needs the help is very, very reticent to accept feedback. Their vision is absolutely correct. And all the customers who are simply too dumb to appreciate the vision are not coming around, right? Classic business, you know, psychology of business errors that you know I've lectured repeatedly about in my courses. Number three, overconfidence in one's abilities. There is no reason to assume that individuals who might have had successful careers in software or in acting would be equally successful as restaurateurs. Yet in numerous instances, people on the show feel that they could easily transfer their success from one domain to another. In my opinion, this is like this is a likely manifestation of the overconfidence bias and infliction that most healthy individuals suffer from in varying degrees. Incidentally, clinically depressed individuals do not typically suffer from such delusional overconfidence. Researchers have wondered whether this demonstrates that individuals who are innately more realistic about their talents are more prone to clinical depression or whether being depressed leads to a more accurate self-concept. The old chicken egg problem rears its ugly head yet again. Uh, this reminds me of a show to link it back to Bar Rescue where this uh, lady, I think it was in Detroit, uh, who was a clinical psychologist. Uh, she had a practice. Uh, I believe she had a PhD. Uh, decided that no, uh, she wants to leave that and she wants to exercise her fantasy of opening a beautiful jazz bar, even though, you know, jazz music constitutes a very, very small percentage of the you know, music preference market. And of course, she started floundering, uh, but at least in her case, she was willing to uh, change and adapt and implement some of uh, John Taffer's feedback. But somehow she thought that she was a clinical psychologist and, oh, it should be no problem to make the transfer to owning a jazz bar. Not so easy to do so. Number four, being offended by a direct communication style. And this, of course, applies very much to uh, uh, Gordon Ramsay and very much so to John Taffer. I've often wondered, I don't know, maybe John will watch this clip. I've often wondered whether he needs to be so heavy handed. I do appreciate the fact that oftentimes you you need to be this heavy handed to get people out of their stupor, to get them to anchor away from their, you know, absolutely staunch positions and you can't always caress them to, to to change sometimes i think he's maybe a bit heavy-handed maybe it's part of the drama of the show but in any case here's what i had to say as any viewer knows chef ramsey can be outlandishly frontal and aggressive when providing feedback even in instances that otherwise do not warrant or justify such belligerence this can at times create a barrier in communication as the offended restaurateur is unable to accept the apparent disrespect that he, he or she is being shown by Mr. Ramsey. Bottom line, in each of the latter cases, fragile and or big egos hinder the restaurateur's ultimate objective, namely to run a successful establishment. Excessive pride is indeed a deadly sin. So this article that I had written nearly 10 years ago uh, uh, for Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares perfectly applies. I mean, down to the last word, uh, for uh, John Taffer's Bar Rescue, precisely because they're both dealing with the same set of psychological traps that many people and certainly entrepreneurs succumb to. There you have it, folks. Hope you're having a good week. The weekend's coming up soon. Tons to do. And remember, if you haven't heard in two weeks, I'll be heading out to Southern California to appear on the Rubin Report and to appear again on uh, the Joe Rogan experience. Uh, I might also do one or two other shows, but not sure yet. Talk to you soon. Ciao.